Last week, I took a look at the Nikon SB24, and I was really impressed with the flash for the uh, amount that it cost, a $25, $30 flash, and I didn't think that I was gonna be able to find anything that could compare to this for um, anywhere near that price. But as it would have it, I did a little searching, and the Amazon Basics VT560 was $23. So this new was less than I could find an SB24 on eBay for which was uh, pretty impressive. In terms of features, the Amazon Basics Flash does not have a lot going for it. Eight power settings, manual mode, uh, S1 slave one mode that is an optical slave, which is really nice because then you don't have to have cheap wireless triggers hooked up to every single flash. The Nikon SB24 does not have an optical slave mode, which means that if you wanted to use three, four, five of these flashes, have to have a trigger for each of them. Whereas with the Amazon Basics, we would only need one way to trigger the main light and the rest of them would be triggered remotely. And then there is S2 slave two mode, which is for uh, use with TTL. That's the manual set. I have no interest in ever using it for that. So I didn't take a look at that. And a test button, test fire the flash. The head 90 degrees and then 180 that way. 90 that way for 270 degrees of rotation, pretty standard. There is a diffuser, a bounce card. The flash head does not zoom. The SB24 flash head does zoom. There's also nothing locking in place the head from swiveling. And then there are other features missing that would be on the SB24 if you were using it on a compatible film camera. I have no interest in shooting film. So for my purposes, those features don't matter. I did a very scientific test of the power levels, got my light meter out, loaded up the flash, held it kind of, eh, you know, about arm's length across, shot it at the light meter a few times, got a headache, but I would say that it's about a third a stop, less powerful than the SB24. I kind of had to guess on what uh, angle the flash head is set to, but it wasn't so underpowered that it would be in any way unusable. Also included in the box, manual, a little stand, and just a really cheap carrying bag. The stand is interesting because it has a, I'm gonna guess quarter inch tripod screw mount on the bottom, which means that this can be set onto a tripod, locked into place, and then, you know, slap the flash in there and have some way to put it on a stand. Well, you can use a tripod as a stand. So if you have tripods around, it removes the need to have light stands with um, cold shoe mounts on them or some other way of sticking a flash on there. That's nice because it slowly chops away at the money required if you want to have three, four, five of them. Whereas, so the SB24, couple dollars more, gonna need wireless flashes. Uh, the cheapest they can be is like four or five dollars for a trigger. So adding that up, starting to look at pretty significant savings in terms of the Amazon Basics flash compared to the SB24. But the really interesting part comes when we take a look at recycle times. Here's a close-up of the back of the flash. I'm gonna go ahead and power it on. You can cycle through the power levels, go through the modes, and then there's the test. And this is interesting because the recycle time to me seemed about two seconds. And that's about half the time of the SB24, which is a big deal to me. Waiting for a flash recharge is isn't fun and it can get quite annoying if you're waiting for it to recharge, take a picture, wasn't charged, get exposure problems, it doesn't fire, all sorts of things. I think with the Amazon Basics Flash, that's gonna be a lot less likely to happen than in Nikon SB24. And for something like product photography for eBay or Amazon or Etsy or a small online store, Something like that, where you're trying to get production work done, the SB24 is going to be annoying. And then add into the fact it has an optical slave, cuts back on the number of wireless triggers you'd have to purchase, 
cuts back on the number of batteries required to power everything. And I think there's a good case to be said that this is probably going to be best value for money for still life product photography under $30 but 40, 50, maybe even more. A lot of the more expensive used flashes don't have optical slaves, which means you're back to using wireless triggers on everything. I don't think that makes a, a whole lot of sense for still life. Would I wanna do events or weddings or anything like that with this flash? Well, I don't wanna do those to begin with, so no. But, uh, you know, the flash, probably not the best choice for that. Having the ability to zoom the flash head, and then even with that, I would want something that was more expensive and also with that more capable. After going to the features and putting a little use on the flash, it really has the options that I'm looking for. Optical slave and fairly refast recharge time compared to anything remotely close to it in terms of price. The recharge time on the flash is literally twice as fast as the SB24. And I think that's a big deal if you're just trying to do some production work and bust out some stuff. Is it comparable to more expensive flashes? No, but I do think that it meets that minimum threshold of having the features that are the most usable. Having two or three or four of these is pretty much the cheapest kit I can imagine that would be usable for product photography for something like eBay or Amazon, Etsy, a small web store, somewhere where not quite at the level to wanting to pay a professional to take the product images, but at a point where it starts to make sense that to want those better images because they're gonna help with conversions and things like that. So really still surprised at how much I like the flash. I will be picking up more in the future unless I can find something even cheaper that would be usable for that type of kit. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this helpful. I'll be covering more flashes in the future. I don't think anything's gonna hit the value proposition of the Amazon Basics, but I'm gonna keep looking. And I'm gonna be putting together a kit for as cheap as I can imagine for someone that's looking to do some very basic white background product photography that would be helpful to people selling on Amazon, eBay, Etsy, small web stores and things like that. So if you want to see that or more of the lighting stuff, hit subscribe. There will be more videos in the future. So until next time.